In this Fusion 360 tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make an acrylic laser cut house. We're going to use fluorescent pink acrylic because it captures the light and then glows on the edges, but you can use any kind of acrylic. The assembly method for this house will be using acrylic solvent glue. This is the thin water-like glue that uses capillary action to glue flat pieces of acrylic together. This is different than a traditional laser cut box with finger joints. This is done for aesthetic reasons to avoid the look of the finger joint box. To get started making an acrylic laser cut house, we need to first make a component. To do that, go to the create menu in the top left, click new component. We'll call this component front. Then we need to create an offset plane. By creating an offset plane from the origin, we can use mirror commands to more quickly make our house. To construct an offset plane, click Construct, Offset Plane. Then we'll click one of the sides. I'm going to click the side here between the Z and Y axes. Then I'm gonna come out about four inches. Right now it's at millimeters, but I can type four inches. By default, Fusion is in millimeters, but we can change that in document settings right here to inches. Then I'm going to create a sketch on this offset plane. I'll create a rectangle by clicking the rectangle, or I can press R. I'll draw a rectangle, and then I'm going to use the midpoint constraint. That's the diamond or triangle looking thing. And I can click this line in the origin, and now it's centered on the origin. Let's give this some dimensions by pressing D, then dragging down. I'm going to type eight for eight inches and then the height is going to be 12.5 inches. For our house, we need to have a roof line. So I'll use the line tool by pressing L, and I'll hover and start at the midpoint at the top, and I'll draw a line. Then I'll hover again and draw a line. There are many ways to constrain this point, but one of the ways is I can press D, select this point, then the top point, drag over, and then type the number I want. This one is still not constrained, so you could draw a sketch line across, or you could use the horizontal vertical constraint and click here and here. Now our sketch is fully constrained, so we can see that by coming down to sketches and then seeing the padlock. I'm going to finish the sketch and then I'm going to orbit. For this particular house, we're going to make it approximately eight inches wide. So I'm going to press E. And then because this panel and sketch is already four inches, I'm going to go negative 0.25. That means the outside dimensions of the house will be eight inches. Next, I'm going to click the top level component by clicking this dot in the top left, and I'll create a new component, and I'm going to call this back. Next, I'll create another construction plane. I'll click the offset plane button, and this time, notice I'm going to go negative four. Then I can create a sketch right on this plane, and I can press P to project. This will allow me to select geometry. I'll select the front of the house and press OK. I could have also mirrored across, so either way is fine. What this does is allow you to update this geometry and then have the projection come across. Mirror works in a similar way. Each have their own use cases, but we'll solve the problem in the same way. Now I'm going to press E, select this sketch, and I'm gonna go 0.25. So now we have the two sides of our house. And of course we could put windows in these. For example, if I wanted to put windows in the back, I could draw a sketch right here. And then I could draw a rectangle and then another rectangle. And I could use the collinear constraint right here to make sure that the tops and bottoms of these windows are collinear. Then I can give them a dimension, let's say 2.5, and then we'll give them a dimension of 1.5. That's up to you, and of course I can then drag down here and then click this dimension. If I wanna evenly space these windows out, there's an interesting way you can do that. I can come over to line type, and I can click construction line, and then I can press L, and I can start at the midpoint here, draw straight over, start at the midpoint here, draw to this midpoint, then start at this midpoint and draw to this midpoint. Then I can use the equal constraint and I can make each of these equal. And then once they're all equal, 
those windows are perfectly centered. Now I just need to decide how far away they are. And I think I'll do that from the roof line. So I'll click here and then this point and I'll come straight over. I'm going to make that an even one inch. Once I finish my sketch, I'm ready to extrude. So I can press E and click this window and this window. And then I'll orbit so you can see what's happening. And then I'm going to go negative 0.25. So you can make any kind of cutouts or other features on the house. That's up to you. So I'm just going to do those two right there. And if you want to go back and work on the front, remember that you activate the component. So right here it says front. I'll click this little dot. Then I'll go on the front. And so on the front, we also need to add some information. Uh, we can add some windows. So I'll create another sketch. And for this one, maybe I'll just do the same window. So I'll press P and I'm going to project uh, this geometry back. So I could either uh, pick bodies or the selection filter. So I can come in here and pick just these lines. And I'll say OK. And then I want to draw a door. So I'm going to guess where that is. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle by pressing R and I'll draw a door. I think I'm not going to line it up with that window and I'll press D and for this door. Let's make it two inches, make a nice big wide door and then let's see. Maybe 3.5 and then I need to give it a height. So I'm going to go from here to here, probably want some steps. So I'm going to make this 1.5. So the door is 1.5 up and then from here to here, I think I'll make it 0.5. So now the door opening is in the right spot. So I can finish my sketch and I can press E and then I'm going to click this one, this one and this one and I'm going to go negative 0.25. So now I have basic features and of course I can go in and add additional pieces if I wanted to and add some engraving, but I think this is good enough for that shape. Now I'm going to go back up to the top level component. Then I'm going to create a new component and I'm going to call this component side. And I'll say OK. Now, where am I going to draw my sketch? So I'll click the sketch and I could make offset planes, but I already have this edge here. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to make sure I click this edge. And then I can simply press P over on this side and if I select the bodies filter, so not the purple, but the bodies, I can select the whole body and then press OK. And it just gives me a cleaner projection. Then I can press R and go from this inside corner all the way down to this corner out here. And it should be fully constrained because it's from projections. You can see the padlock right here. I can now finish my sketch or I could draw a window. So if let's let's see, I'll just draw one window on the side right in the middle and we'll make the dimensions of the window two and we'll make the height three and we'll make the height from the top here 1.5 and then we'll center it by using the vertical so I can hold shift with the horizontal vertical constraint and then I can see that middle dot right there and then I can click on both of them and now it's vertically constrained. I'm going to finish the sketch and I'm going to press E. This time we want to make sure we go in. So I'm going to go negative 0.25. So that's now taking care of that side. Now I'm going to go back up to the top level component. And this time I'm going to use the mirror command. That way you can see two ways of doing it. Before we use the offset plane to center things, this time we'll use create, then mirror. And we want to make sure we select components. I'll click this component and the mirror plane will be this plane. And then we can press OK. So now we have our house is coming along. We probably need a roof. So I'm going to create a new component and I'll call this component roof. And then I'm going to create a sketch. I'll select the sketch tool and I'll come right on the top here and I'll click on that roof line. Then I need to draw a rectangle. So I'll press R and I'll draw a rectangle. Using constraints, I can use the collinear constraint and click the top center of the house and this line. Once I have it, once I have this top line selected and collinear, I can press D and I'm going to click this point and this line and I'm going to make this 0.75.
Then I'm going to click this line and this line. I'm going to make it one. Then lastly, I'll click this edge and this edge, and I'll make it one as well. Now we can finish our sketch, or we can just press E to extrude, and I can click the pieces. Make sure you click this piece as well. And then I'm going to come up 0.25. So this is a great example of what can happen. So I selected the wrong line for the top of the house, but I can go back and edit my sketch. So if I right click edit sketch, then I can delete this collinear constraint and then I can make it collinear with the top. So if I click this one and now I make it collinear with the top and then I finish my sketch, it'll update. And then sometimes you need to edit this feature. So then I can right click on extrude edit feature and then I just have to press that one, and now everything is extruded. Now, if I look from the right, you'll notice that this piece of plexiglass doesn't line up. That's because if you want to have it be perfectly at the roof, you either have to extend this and then cut them down manually rather than with the laser cutter, or you could just double this piece and then make a bend with a plastic former. It's really up to you how you want to form this. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend this and pretend that I'm gonna cut it later. That way I'll cut two pieces that are a bit larger than what we need. So the first thing I can do is just go ahead and go to the top level and then I'm gonna create a mirror and I'm gonna mirror this component and I'm gonna mirror it across the mirror plane. And this should show that the pieces don't reach. So this would be fine, but it looks a little strange. So what we can do is either cut a piece of plexiglass that's much longer than this, you know, maybe half an inch longer than the two of them combined, or just extend both of these. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to extend them so I can press E to extrude, but I'm just gonna to go to the first one and I'll press E to extrude and I'll just go 0.25. And then if I go down to the mirror and I click this one, and I press E to extrude, I'll say 0.25. And now you can see that these overlap. So what I can do is with this one selected, I can create a sketch on the edge, and this is only to show how they would actually be. We don't actually wanna cut them to this size, but we wanna have a nice image in our design. So this would be the size you would cut them, and then you would actually cut them on a saw. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press P to project, and get both of these and then say okay and then i'm gonna draw a line right here from this section straight up and then this is the angle that you'll cut the piece either on a bandsaw or with a sander then i can press e and then i can extrude these two pieces all the way and there's a nice feature so i can go backwards and if i don't know the number i can just say distance all and then in objects to cut i can make sure that it's only cutting the mirror so that way it doesn't cut the roof and i say okay then i can go ahead and do the same thing on the roof so now i can go ahead and grab the roof right here and then i should be able to create a sketch right on the front and then i'll press p and i'll project this piece in and i'll say okay now all these are ready to go. So I can just press E and grab these ones. And this time I'm gonna go this way and the distance will be all. And I'll say, okay, but I'm gonna make sure on the objects to cut that I only wanna cut the roof. And then I say, okay. And then if I go back to the top level component, you'll notice that I have this nice roof. Now again, the laser cutter can't cut this piece and you need to cut it just a little bit longer, but this way you can get a nice render. And then you can always just adjust your tool paths to be a little bit longer so you have plenty of plexi to work with. The other way to do that is to bend it with a plastic bender. So now our house is really coming along. So the last thing we could potentially do is we could start adding porches and other roofs. Anytime you add an angle, so if I wanted to have an angled roof right here, we have to do the same trick as right there. But we could add additional porches and steps but that is all up to you. One thing that's nice is you can go ahead and put a material on it. So if I press A and then I go to material library and I say plastic, I can put this acrylic red on all the pieces. 
that's red, but if I double click on it, then I can change it to pink and then make it a little brighter. And then when we do our render, it will give us a sense of what it might look like. To get a nicer render, a nice trick is to create a new component. And we'll go ahead and call this render base. And then I'll draw a sketch on the ground plane. And I'm going to get a create rectangle center rectangle. And I'm going to start in the center. And I'm just going to make this really big. And I'll zoom in and make sure that's coincident so I can make that coincident with the origin. And then I'll finish my sketch. And then all I'm going to do is extrude that down. So then I can go E, extrude, negative 0.25. So that's just a thin plate for a render. And then if I press A for appearance, I can get something rough like powder, powder coat rough gray, put that on there. And if I click the render tab and under setup, if I go to environment library and I click sharp highlights, and then in settings, instead of solid color, I pick environment. Now I'll get actual reflections and shadows that look nice on here. So if I do a render, then I get this nice fluorescent plexiglass look. Actual fluorescent plexiglass has even more uh, light effects shining on it, but this looks pretty good the way it is. Then you can use the arrange command to lay everything flat and then export it for cutting on a laser cutter.